Welcome to TNJ Gaming. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to translate from being a 5e DM into being a Mutants and Masterminds GM. We all know that 5e is the, the big TTRPG on the block. It's uh, the most successful and the one that gets the most press. But as I've said before on the channel, there's a lot, ton of RPGs out there that deserve a look and can fit different game styles that you may be wanting to play, sometimes a little bit better than 5e. And one of my favorites, Mutants and Masterminds. If you want to be a superhero, uh, this is my favorite system to do so. And I think that, especially with how big between all the Marvel movies, the recent Batman movies, Spider-Man, everything, uh, Spider-Man's Marvel, I know, but all of these major movies that have just kind of been huge blockbusters, I feel like a lot of people want to play as superheroes at the table. And I think Mutants and Masterminds can be a great way, especially for DMs like myself, who before were used to DMing D&D &D and 5e in particular, to translate that gap between D&D &D and the superhero genre using Mutants and Masterminds. So we're going to go over a few, uh, five of my tips and tricks that I found just as my time uh, using the uh, Mutants and Masterminds systems and a few of the things I found that really helped me kind of translate and bridge that divide. But before we go into that, for this month, uh, for the TNJ Gaming Channel, our game of the month is Mighty Morph, or actually just Power Rangers by Renegade. Always want to add that Mighty Morph, and that's how I grew up on it. But it is just the Power, Ranger, Power Rangers system by Renegade. So what that means is you're going to see a ton of Power Rangers videos on this channel. Um, our next one coming up this weekend is how to build a Power Rangers PC on Roll20. And we're going to go through that just kind of step by step. Don't worry, we're doing one for uh, Mutants and Masterminds too. Uh, that'll probably be a couple weeks up. But stay tuned for that and then join us for our April 5th actual live play game for the Power Rangers system where we'll be giving away a gift certificate you can use to buy a PDF uh, for the Power Ranger system by Renegade. So I'm going to have links uh, below for my Twitch gaming channel, Twitch uh, TNJ Gaming. Uh, so check us out there. Uh, drop a follow if you can. And basically, uh, if you join us April 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and watch our actual play game using the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers system, you'll be able to enter in a raffle and potentially win a, the, the gift certificate and be able to buy your own PDF and bring some Power Ranger gaming to your table, too. So check that out. Drop a follow and drop a subscribe on the channel, too. Uh, so you're going to see a lot more Power Rangers content coming through. But one of the big focuses for TNJ Gaming as a whole is Mutants and Masterminds. Love this system, and I really want to make sure that more people know about it. I think it's a little bit more visibility, especially for people that are already DMing on the 5e side. I wanted to make it easier for you to pick up this new system and kind of bring it in and give your players the new and just really i know some people criticize 5e just because uh overpowered heroic fantasy and that's not one of my criticisms but it's something i hear quite frequently if hey if you want to if your players want to be overpowered they want to be just straight up superheroes right out of the comic books right off the screen give them units and mastermind stop trying to give them too much uh power in 5e Flip them to a different system where them being overpowered is the name of the game. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but first, we're going to dive in there and we're going to give you just a couple of the few things I found really made my life a little bit easier once I started. Kind of put them in practice. So the first one, don't get overwhelmed. Uh, don't let everything like the world come crashing in on you. This system, there's a lot going on with it, and especially if you're used to 5e, uh, there's definitely more rules, I would say. In a sense, there's more rules with this system, but they kind of flow very well, in my opinion, once you kind of lean into them. But with it being a new system, kind of allow yourself not to know everything, especially with all the different powers, uh, advantages, skills, everything that goes into this system. There's just so much going on that if you give yourself just kind of that leeway, that permission not to know everything, uh, that permission to learn with your players as you go on and make your own judgments uh, just on the spot, you're going to enjoy this a lot more and your players are going to enjoy this a lot more. So uh, I'm going to be streaming a game on April 19th. Unfortunately, the one I streamed before, I had my audio with my webcam. And my players didn't tell me, so I don't, I'm probably not going to post that one here just because it doesn't sound the best. But you'll see that, with that there's probably there's rulings I know for sure. I haven't gone through and pointed them out, but there's rulings I probably got wrong. Uh, we may have not even used all the powers exactly the correct way, but I had fun and my players said they had fun as well. 
So this is one of those things to go back for him, especially I think, I think when you first start off as a 5e DM, it, it's all right not to get everything perfect. So just allow yourself to go through, learn as you play, and don't let that world come crumbling down uh, as you're doing so. Because it's just one of those things that the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it, and the better it'll all be. So that's tip number one. Just don't get overwhelmed. Take it as you go. Learn as you go. You don't need to know everything right before you start rolling the dice. My other big tips are number two, combat. Coming from 5e, one of the biggest things I had to adjust for, and I'm still, I'll honestly, be honest, I'm still adjusting for this with the Mutants and Mastermind system. There's, it's a different flow and a different style of combat than you're probably used to as a 5e DM. 5e, uh, especially I DM a lot with uh, traditional D&D as well as Star Wars 5e. Check us out in Dungeon Jedi Masters if you haven't already. You'll see a lot of my live play games there. Uh, and I love for 5e, good challenging combat where you're using that CR system, balancing it and get everything just so. If you're coming from 5e and you're used to DMing like that, just kind of using all the different numbers and balances and knowing that if you follow them that you're going to have most likely a good fight unless the dice or just go completely one way or the other, that's going to be a hard transition for mutants and masterminds. Uh, through both their DMG and the Hero Handbook, they only have a couple of paragraphs on uh, actual combat balancing because it's not it's not the same beat em up style they're used to with 5e. With uh, the Mutants and Masterminds, one of the things I've really found that makes the combats more enjoyable and something that I would really recommend doing is not making it just kind of one side goes into the other side falls. Give it more of an objective. And I know people say this for 5e all the time, but I feel like it's almost essential excuse me, for the Mutants and Mastermind system, is to just really make sure that when you're making the combats that they're coming through dynamic uh, and that there's things going on that are outside of just the, the heroes and villains punching each other. And one thing I recommend doing that and either giving your the villain the powers or even just doing some hand wave stuff. So uh, if your heroes and villains are duking it out and it looks like it's going to become almost a quick end, have your villain press a button on their suit and apartment complex explode behind them or light on fire uh, now the heroes have to decide hey are we going to keep fighting this villain or are we going to save the civilians or are we going to do a mixture of the two uh it gives some of those options like that and i would say this is gonna be it's gonna be part number three too but one of the biggest pieces with this is to really involve the environment for the system uh, i think it just excels when you really go through uh and just involve that environment uh, and have these clashes kind of going through and it was either skyscrapers burning down cars running into the villains as they chuck them at the heroes and the heroes have to save the the people inside of them just give some additional objectives mixed in with the regular combat uh, and i think it will flow well there on the other pieces of balance for combat too i'm still kind of getting used to how to precisely balance it we're going to go through a video on that side uh just to kind of go more in depth on the things I found so far, I'm by no means an expert in it. I really feel this is more of a gut system one uh, than the traditional like Pathfinder D and D, where you can have some good hard numbers and know that even if your players are tuned or under tuned, they're they're probably going to do well if you keep those same parameters. This isn't that. Uh, it's more kind of that gut feel and just kind of tweaking until you until you know your group and know how everything's going on that side. So that, that that's number two, just combat. Make sure you're having to deny dynamic combat using the environment. Use and this is like, for most games, it's gonna be kind of heroes and villains using like the villainous nature just to to really kind of build some extra tension in because it's not just five e where you're trying to get your objective done. Usually you're gonna be a hero in the system and you're gonna to want to save the day. You're gonna to want to make sure there's no some villain casualties uh, and those villains know that they're gonna to try to tweak that and use that against you. So. Make sure as uh, the GM, or I always want to say DMs, I came from D&D &D myself, but you're a game master unless you're not the dungeon master. Uh, so as a game master here, make sure you're using those levers uh, and just really giving your players that classic hero experience. The other big one, and this kind of goes right alongside with this too, uh, theater of the mind versus grid combat. Uh, and so this is one I know is going to be kind of hotly contested in the community, but it's one that I've found at least for me, working better, coming from D&D &D and kind of being used to grid combat. I love grid combat for D&D &D and Star Wars 5e, Pathfinder. Those are kind of have their, their war gaming roots. And that's one thing I mentioned. I wanted to mention in combat, too. 
So those games have more of a wargaming root to them. So they're balanced, they're mechanical, uh, the, both sides, you can you kind of figure what the CR or the challenge, and you know you're going to have a fair outcome with that. Mutants and Masterminds, it definitely does have that kind of mechanical base to it, but I would almost say it's more of a less mechanical and more of a narrative story system. For d d it's kind of like uh, you're, you're going up against uh, the forces of D&D, uh, the GMs laid out for you. Uh, and you want to kind of make sure you're building your PC up and make sure that they're powerful as they, they can be or kind of fits their role play. But for Mutants and Masterminds, if you wanted to break the system, you can break the system. What I always recommend uh, with this is just kind of using and building powers that fit with it. Uh, and you kind of, especially as you're bringing those powers and those combats to the, the game, I found it a little bit easier coming from D&D to use theater of the mind versus grid combat. Because with the powers, you can, for very little power cost, uh, power point cost, or hero point cost, you could spend a number of points and be able to run six miles in the six seconds. Uh, So it's just one of those things that you could run further than any grid, fly further than any grid, teleport further than any battle map that you could build. Uh, And that's something that's relatively easy to do, and most of the heroes will have some type of movement that's pretty extraordinary and to be bigger than the map you can build, especially if you play online, or actually, especially if you play in person. If you try to use tiles or grids, it'll just be kind of one of those things where you try to change the grid sizes and make them bigger or change the, the, the to kind of just make it continually bigger and bigger maps until it becomes unmanageable. Believe me, my first few games, I tried that, and I realized the maps were starting to stress me out. Like, I was taking away my enjoyment a little bit where... I think using theater of the mind, at least for me, helped me be able to translate that better. Uh, but it also helped me kind of increase the role play a little bit during combat. Because these are heroes and villains clashing. When you have the, the grid, you almost feel bound to it when you have that real representation of the map. When you kind of do theater of the mind, at least for me in the Mutants and Mastermind system, it just allows me to kind of flow with the environment a little better. It gives my players a little bit more license too to use their hero points. Say, hey, they, they're, they're fighting a, a fire starter uh, on the street. They're like, hey, I'm going to spend a hero point. Now there's a fire hydrant here. I'm going to smash that fire hydrant and spray him down. Uh, and things like that, I just think, come a little bit easier with Theater of the Mind for Mutants and Masterminds. And even just describing damage, like uh, if you're a power, uh, just kind of a real tanky hero build, you want to knock somebody through the wall, you can do that. And all that just gives them more license or flavor, and it just won't make you bog down or people can have ridiculous movement speeds that can just make a grid look stupid in like the first round. So that that's that's one that one's purely my advice on that side. Uh, I know some uh, with the Mutants and Mastermind system still love the grid and kind of swear by the grid, but for me, I, I found it a little bit more of a hindrance than an actual help. So your mileage may vary, but th- uh, try it out. If you've never tried out uh, Theater of the Mind, I've done it every now and then for D and D, but D and D I usually like to have that strategic grid based combat. But if you've never tried it out, try it out on Mutants and Masterminds. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll enjoy it. It's just really one of those ways I, I think can really just flow in and just really give you some more options and better RP while using it too. So one of the other things, so that was number three. So we are, we've already touched on, don't get overwhelmed, combat and how to make it more dynamic using the Mutants and Masterminds system and not falling into the, some of the 5e traps. We've also talked about theater of the mind and how that may be a better fit for it than grid play. One of the things we're going to touch on next is something that's pretty uniquely, uh, or not uniquely Mutants and Masterminds, but I think it just kind of flows pretty well with the Mutants and Masterminds system. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about hero points. Uh, So hero points are great. Uh, They're a really cool device to encourage RP, uh, but also give your players a little bit of extra say in the world uh so what are we going to talk about with hero points kind of comparing to somebody from 5e i like i can equate it to inspiration in my head but it is inspiration in a sense where you can reward it for good rp good strategy uh just kind of good good involvement with the game uh and they start the game off with one hero point uh, each session off i should say with one hero point but it's one of those ones that, especially if you equate it to our uh, inspiration like I did, you probably won't be giving it out enough. Hero points, 
or kind of the lifeblood of the system. Uh, it's one that you'll want to be handing out, uh, not like trivially. You want to make sure that they're earning it and kind of uh, kind of pulling their own weight there too. Uh, but it's one that you want to make sure you're giving out quite frequently just to encourage your players to kind of take ownership in the game as well. Uh, because they get the rerolls and some of the, like, the additional mechanical benefits with the hero points. But I've loved, and I think my players have enjoyed most, when they use those hero points to change the scene. Or not change the scene, to add something to the scene. Like I mentioned before with the example with the Hydrant, they can use those hero points to kind of make some small tweaks to the scene. Uh, and then there's small tweaks. Uh, just kind of good tweaks that will either help out the heroes or give them something to RP off of or uh, use in the combat. Just really just allow them to kind of like step behind the Game Master screen for a bit and throw something in the world that they'd like to see and they'll burn a resource to do so. Uh, now for players, like this isn't going to be like, a, you can't be fighting Superman. It's like, hey, I got wish I had some kryptonite here. But you can't kind of use some things to kind of think creatively, think out of the box, and not always have to rely on the GM. Uh, kind of asking the GM, like, oh, is this there? No, you can be like, yeah, this is there. Here's my hero point. Let's make it happen. I love that. Hero points are one of my favorite parts of the system. I've debated for kind of, I know we're talking about going from 5e to mutants and masterminds. I've debated bringing the change the scene back piece into D&D because I just I think some cool RP comes from that and just some cool creative thought uh, that I think just really elevates the game so that's something I'm thinking about doing if you've done that in your game sound off in the comments because I'd love to see how that works on the 5e side but for the mutants and mastermind side perfect all right so we've already had number four use hero points and use them liberally or give them out liberally I should say we're going to go to the last tip I have for D&D DMs coming to uh, 5e. And that's kind of a twofold one. Be involved in hero creation. Uh, this is going to be what, like, I know with the 5e DM, like, you're usually always checking your player's seats. But with Moons and Masterminds, at least in my experience, I found uh, that it's almost better to create your, like, have your characters, your players create their characters that was hard to say, with you, uh, or at least not with you, uh, but at least with some great kind of guidelines and instructions. Because Mutants and Masterminds, I've mentioned before, if you go in looking to build the uber strong superhero with all the power arrays that can do anything, leap small buildings in a single bound, and earth shattering punches, invulnerable, you could easily do that. You could break the system if you go in with that mindset. But I feel like Mutants and Masterminds kind of feels like a little bit of... Uh, like D&D, if you could break the system, more power to you. Your DM either did something wrong or uh, you've just come up with a really good build. Uh, even if you break the system in D&D, without your DM like just throwing magic items and feats at you, you're still going to be fairly balanced compared to the rest. And even with you being an outlier, you could still make challenging combats. Mutants and Mastermind, which you can consider to flaw if you like. I like the versatility. You can build something that's just crazy uh and that will make it almost unreasonable for your gm to make a challenge for you which is why with building my having my players build their characters i i tell them up front come up with a concept so what do you want to do do you want to be super fast we could build to that do you want to be uh a crazy uh ex super villain or retired super villain uh who's a little bit demented is now a hero uh but uses gadgetry we could do that. That's one of my... Actually, I've talked about two of my characters so far. Uh, for my uh, Arcadia Mutants and Masterminds. But it's just really coming up with that concept and then building your powers and your abilities and your uh, attributes around that concept versus going in and saying, oh, that looks nice, that looks nice, that looks nice. Uh, and just building that overpowered character really helps kind of just structure it and just really help makes a game that's going to be enjoyable for everyone. So as a DM... Just, I'd really kind of work, kind of advise you on that side to tell your character, or your players, don't try to go OP. This is not going to be as kind of just straight combat as D and D is. It's more of a narrative system. Build powers, uh, build abilities, build skills that will reflect the hero you want your PC to build, and just kind of how the effect you want them to have on the universe. Doesn't mean you can't be super strong. You can't have crazy powers, but just build it and build it to a concept and make it fun. So. DMs encourage your players to build to a concept. That's kind of part one of this fifth one. The other one, and you'll see this book on the right-hand side, Power Profiles. 
I didn't buy this right away. I thought, oh, it's just the same powers that are in the system. What do I need that for? Power profiles is a lifesaver, especially if you're coming from 5e, and especially if you want to make it easier on your players to make a new hero. This is, uh, I bought the PDF, uh, I think it was like 20 bucks. Uh, don't quote me on that, maybe 30 bucks. But either way, it's well worth the money. It makes life so much easier. It gives different, and basically what Power Profiles is, and we're going to do a whole video on this pretty soon. Power Profiles breaks down the different powers, or it kind of breaks down the different power classes for most heroes. So like they've got telepathy, they've got super speed, they've got super strength. And they go through all the different powers that are in the handbook and go over the different combinations you can utilize to build them out and kind of get the, the feel you're looking for using like the regular uh, handbook powers. So that's a cool thing. It doesn't add any new powers, but it just gives you different combinations of the powers, the extras, the flaws in a one nice spot so you don't have to go through and reinvent the wheel each time. Like, I didn't buy when we had our first game for the crew. Uh, and it was one of those ones of like, I saw online that everybody kept recommending and recommending. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll pay the 20 bucks. And I kicked myself for not doing it. So if you're like me, it's like, oh, it's just the same powers. That's a foolish thought. I have made the mistake. Don't make my mistake. It's worth the money. It will save you, your players, some time and grief, especially when they know they've got that concept in mind and they know they're going to to get the powers to be able to emulate that out. So... Check it out. Great. Worth the buy. It could really help save uh, some time and frustration. But those were kind of a breakdown of my top five tips for uh, a new DM coming over from 5e to Nunes and Masterminds. The big thing, so we'll kind of give it one quick run through again. So don't get overwhelmed. The books are huge. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of different powers. There's a lot of advantages. It is different interactions between the rules. Give yourself some uh, just grace. Give yourself some leeway. Dive in. Kind of take back to your first time as a 5e DM. You know you're overwhelmed a little bit there, but eventually the more you DM, the more you go through, the more you play with the system, the more comfortable you get and the better it'll get to. If you flub some rules at the beginning, don't worry. Everybody does it. Uh, and the more you get used to it, the more you read it, the more those rules will come into play. And the more you'll get to decide, hey, maybe you don't like the way the rules are. And you'll feel confident tweaking them out too. So that's the first one. Don't get overwhelmed. Combat. Just give a little bit of a different structure than 5e. You want to make sure that you're giving that dynamic combat with different objectives. Uh, and have like just real, make sure you're giving the characters that real superhero versus the villain experience with just different things in the environment going on at the same time. Leading into the next one, Theater of the Mind. This one's, uh, as a, this one, what I probably want to keep my old disclaimer to, but for me, I found using Theater of the Mind versus grid combat just works a little bit better with this system. Uh, just because you can get a bit more flavor and you won't feel stressed out that your grid's not going to accommodate super speed, super flight, and all of that. So mileage may, may vary, but give it a try if you've never tried it before. Number four, use here or give out hero points a lot. Like not like, don't water it down, but if you see like an RP moment, like, oh, that's pretty good. Maybe not enough for you to give inspiration for at 5e, but definitely should be for, uh, for mutants and masterminds because... The hero points and the abilities they have for just kind of mechanically are, are good too, but the scene alteration in my point of view is just one of those ones that just elevates the game. And the more opportunities your players have to change that scene, the more buy-in they'll have, and like the think the more fun you'll have. At least I have more fun when they take those options. And then finally, be involved in that character creation. Help your players through it. Advise them of the, uh, the tone of your campaign. Uh, if it's going to be like my game, Arcadia, Silver Agey fun. Uh, it's for me, most of my other main campaigns, if you watch uh, my Twitch channel, Invasion, my Star Wars 5e game, Super Serious, my D&D Kazi game, which isn't streamed currently, also Super Serious. I wanted a more laid back, funny, kind of, uh, they have their own color terms for it. I forgot what the color was. It's like a bright colored panel uh, for this game. Uh, so definitely let your players know the tone of the game as they're building their PCs. And then buy power profiles. It's the best 20, 30 bucks you'll spend. Save you so much time and frustration just to be able to see what the actual designers lay out for how to build certain powers into your PC. So, hey, but that was just got five re or five tips and tricks if you're coming from being a 5e DM into being a new Munes and Masterminds GM. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like and drop a comment too. Maybe give us some tips of your own. If you came from 5e or d d or even another system over to Mutes and Masterminds, what are some things you found made life a little bit easier and made DMing uh, just a bit, kind of a bit of an easier hurdle for you? Sound off there. I'd love to hear you guys. Uh, drop a like for us too. Uh, subscribe if you already have it. Check us out on Tegan J Gaming on Twitch too. Every Tuesday we've got a game. Uh, most uh, the next few games will be Star Wars 5e, but April 19th we're doing our Mutants and Masterminds for Arcadia. Join us there. Um, also, April 5th, this month's Power Ranger month, so join us, potentially win a, a free um, Power Rangers book by Renegade for the new RPG system. So check us out there. But overall, great hanging with you guys again. Uh, drop a like and hope you guys get to get your super on with your teams. See y'all later.